Hello, welcome to my op-amp cheat sheet video. In this video I'm going to show you about 10 different op-amp circuits fulfilling different functions. Um, these are not my circuits but I've gathered them as I've begun to educate myself about op-amps and I tend to use these basic circuits as building blocks to achieve ever more complex aims. This is not an in-depth mathematical analysis of these circuits. I'm going to simulate them, uh, but the only maths that you need to understand these, at least to start using them, are the very simple equations behind inverting and non-inverting amplifiers. First of all, I'm going to cover the basics, inverting and non-inverting amplifiers, also signal processing circuits, half-wave and full-wave rectifiers, the half-wave rectifier including selecting the above ground portion of an AC signal and also a circuit to select only the below ground portion of an AC signal. Also mathematical functions sum, average, min, max, absolute and also the sum circuit can be used as a bias adjust. I've tested and used many of these circuits using just three basic components um, I tend to use the TL07 series of op-amps. TL074 just means that there's four op-amps in this single IC package. 10K resistor and diode. This is the 1N4004 diode. My actual paid job is as a computer programmer um, so I'm fairly comfortable with digital style electronics and I've later begun to educate myself about analog electronics. I've started to see these circuits as analog counterparts of the mathematical functions I might do as a computer programmer. Um, and actually one of the original applications of op-amps was in analog computers, as in pre-digital computers to perform mathematical functions. So this is my master plan of all the different function circuits uh, which I've drafted in Circuit Lab. Don't worry, I'm going to break this down into individual modules which can be used independently. I've just drafted them together so that I'm able to simulate the outputs on a single graph. I've used Circuit Lab for this simulation. Uh, I'm not being endorsed by Circuit Lab in, in any way. Uh, it's just the software that I'm using at the moment uh, to teach myself a little bit more about analog electronics uh, and to experiment without the danger of anything exploding. I found it to be very user-friendly software. Um, the only disadvantage is the lack of variety of analog ICs, especially the LM13700, which is a kind of synthesizer component, which would be very, very useful to be able to simulate. This is the inverting amplifier circuit, where the gain is minus R2 divided by R1. This is the one place within this whole collection of circuits that I've had to use a 20k resistor. You can just use two 10k resistors in series, um, at least just to prototype these circuits. It's worth mentioning, just while I'm talking about this first circuit, uh, that I've included a load resistor on each of these diagrams, um, which is always the resistor just beneath the label for the output, in this case marked R41. That's just the resistor with the output voltage across it, which provides a measurable voltage. This is the simple way to visualize the output of an inverting amplifier. When the input is held at a constant 1 volt, the output is held at a constant minus 2 volts. In this more complex simulation, the input is fed a 1 volt amplitude 1000 Hz sine wave, and the output is a 1000 Hz 2 volts amplitude sine wave but 180 degrees phase shifted relative to the input. The unity version of this circuit, uh, a kind of negative buffer, um, uses 10k resistors for R1 and R2. Whenever you see an op-amp circuit described as unity, 
that just means that the output should be at exactly the same voltage as the input or in the case of the inverting amplifier unity it will be the exact opposite voltage. So this is the non-inverting amplifier circuit. The gain of this circuit is equal to 1 plus R1 divided by R2. So in this case R1 and R2 are 10k. 10 divided by 10 is 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So that's why it's a times 2 gain circuit. This is a simple way to visualize the output of the non-inverting amplifier. The input is fed with a constant 1 volt, so the output is at a constant 2 volt because this is set up as a times 2 gain amplifier. This is the slightly more complex visualization. When the input is fed with a 1000 Hz 1 volt amplitude sine wave, the result is a 1000 Hz 2 volts amplitude sine wave. As a unity amplifier, that is to say, an amplifier with a gain of only one, it can also be used as a buffer, which can be quite useful when you want to make sure that your whatever's generating your input signal is not disturbed by whatever's using the output. This is the sum circuit with the inputs A and B and the output, which is just the sum of both the inputs. I've also drawn a related circuit here which is just a, a use of the summer circuit to adjust the bias of the output signal. So this is just a potentiometer used as a voltage divider at one of the inputs uh, connected to plus volts and ground. So if the input A is at 1 volt for instance you could adjust this potentiometer to place the output at any point between plus volts and minus volts. The sum function has added 1 volt plus 2 volts and the output is set to 3 volts. In this more complex example two sine waves are applied to the inputs but one input has a 1000 Hz sine wave on it and the other input has a 700 Hz sine wave so they interfere and cancel each other at different points. As you can see the green line represents the sum function so when the peaks of the sine waves coincide the result is a 2 volt amplitude at the output and when the two input waves simultaneously cross zero the output is also zero. This is the subtraction circuit so with the inputs A and B the output will take the value of the difference between these inputs. You can't quite see that. I'm going to hide the 1 volt line. The difference function is set at 1 volt because 1 minus 2 equals 1. With the difference function the output is always set at the difference between each of the inputs. So when the difference is zero, as in as here, the output, this kind of olive green line, is at zero. When the difference is greatest, and the output is set to two volts. What confused me when I first saw this difference graph is that I kind of expected the difference to be absolute rather than having a sign to it. Because if you say what's the difference between these two peaks, you would say it's two volts. You wouldn't say the difference is minus two volts. Um, this is why I added an absolute circuit onto the end of the different circuit and this gives me the kind of output that I would have expected um, to see. So you can see with the absolute difference, when the difference is approximately 2 volts, the output of the absolute difference is 2 volts. This is the circuit that, when combined with the difference function, produced that purple line. This is the absolute function, which is the same thing as a full wave rectifier circuit. The blue line here is the 1000 Hz sine wave input, and the purple line here is the full wave rectifier output. 
these are two halfway rectifiers. Both of them invert the output, but this one selects the negative portion of the wave and pushes it positive, and this one selects the positive portion of the wave and pushes it negative. So as with the other diagrams, the light blue line here is the original 1000 Hz sine wave. The darker blue line is the rectified below ground portion of the sine wave. The pink line here is the output of the opposite half wave rectifier, which is taking the above ground portion of the sine wave and pushing it negative. If I show the outputs of both of these opposite half wave rectifiers and hide the original wave, you can see kind of a 180 degree phase shifted version of the original wave, but split into two halves. This is the average function circuit. It's very much like the adder circuit, except the feedback loop has no resistor in it. The red line here is the output of the average function. When one input is held at 1 volt and the other input is held at 2 volts, as you would expect, the average of that is 1.5 volts. As you can see with the interfering sine wave inputs, the red line is tracking the average between the two sine waves. This is the graph of the sum function from earlier on in the video. You probably noticed this is just a higher amplitude version of the average function, so it kind of makes sense that the circuits themselves look very similar. This is the circuit for the maximum function, one of the more complicated circuits in this video. This is what happens when you feed 1 volt into one input and 2 volts into the other input of the maximum function. You notice you can't actually see the max function line because it's at the same level as the 2 volt line, that is it's selected the maximum value. Things get a little bit more interesting when we feed the 1000 Hz and 700 Hz sine waves into the inputs. It's kind of formed this interesting shadow of the peaks of each wave. This is the minimum function circuit. The min function has more or less set itself to the value of the lowest input, which is 1 volt. So when I feed the 1000 Hz and 700 Hz sine waves in, you can see the output tracks the value of the input with the lowest value. When I combine the graphs of the max and min outputs, you almost see an image reconstructed of the original above ground parts of the wave. So those are all the circuits that I'm going to cover in this video. And there's the graph of all the outputs combined together, which looks a little bit like multicolored spaghetti to me. Um, I hope you found that video interesting. If you have any comments or especially corrections, please leave a comment below. If you found that video interesting, please leave a like, uh, subscribe for more electronics related content and miscellaneous devices and circuits and things that I, I'm working on all the time. In particular, I've been working on a synth module uh, for the past month or so, uh, and I've been posting a couple of videos about aspects of that too, so you might find those interesting. Thanks for watching and goodbye.